Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell. R3 is truly the nation's leading provider of regenerative medicine services. With over 10,000 successful regenerative medicine procedures performed at over 30 centers of excellence nationwide. The topic today is the basics of umbilical cord stem cell therapy. All right, I'm going to explain to you what is involved with the biology and what it's doing for you. Okay, I'll keep it on layman's terms because the last thing I want to do is go over anybody's head. All right, so what are we talking about? We're talking about the products of conception. Okay, and they come, the FDA regulates the whole process, but basically they come from a woman under the age of 35 who's undergoing a scheduled C-section. All right, the uh, donor hospitals are usually very close to where, for instance, our la the labs we work with are located in Fort Lauderdale and Salt Lake City. But basically here's how it works. The woman is consented and then screened heavily to make sure that there's no significant diseases or things that uh, might pop up. Okay, and then when the C-section occurs, the baby's fine. Normally those products of conception, which consist of the umbilical cord tissue, umbilical cord blood, Wharton's jelly, which is a gelatinous material that's around the umbilical cord, okay, the placental membrane and the amniotic fluid are normally all discarded. All right. In this case, they go into a sterile container. There's a tech in the room who takes it right to the lab, and there's a FDA regulated process that the material goes through in order to be processed. And during that process, all the DNA factors are removed so that there is no rejection by the, the recipient. You know, who could be, it doesn't have to be related, it could be anybody, any other human, um, but a rejection doesn't occur because all those DNA factors, HLA factors, MHC, all that's removed, all right? In over 10,000 cases, we've never had a rejection, um, and that's because that process removes everything that, that could possibly cause a rejection, all right? Now, so you have those things, the umbilical cord, the umbilical cord blood, um, and then Wharton's jelly, uh, placental membrane, and amniotic fluid. Within those products of conception, are a tremendous amount of cells and proteins that work to help repair and regenerate damaged tissue in your body. We're not talking about something that can, can cure cancer. We're not talking about something that's going to cure or completely heal arthritis. That's not what's happening. What's happening is a, what I call a mitigation. And here's one example. Uh, for instance, when you have arthritis, degenerative arthritis, you start to lose more cartilage than you make. How much cartilage you make stays consistent throughout life, but you start to lose more. So we're mitigating and changing the ratio with the stem cell procedure where you're making more cartilage than you're losing. But that ratio doesn't stay there forever, it'll start to come back down. You know, how long it takes, could be a year, could be four or five years. But anyway, that's really what's happening. I like to use the term mitigation. So here are some of the various components that are in these products of conception. One are cytokines. Cytokines are very, very, very good at reducing inflammation and modulating autoimmune conditions. So they're very good for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, lupus, inflammatory arthritis, things like that. There are a ton of what's called growth factors. Growth factors are very good at being construction foreman. That's the analogy that I like to use. So a construction foreman doesn't do a lot of work by him or herself, but what he or she does is they call in other cells from your body to help repair and regenerate. So there's a lot of signaling that goes on between the bio biologic that is injected or infused and your own body, okay? So not only does it do a lot of work itself, but it calls in reinforcements from you to help with that repair and regeneration. In addition, there are lots of cell types that I had never heard of years ago called exosomes, secretomes, microRNA, and then there's a lengthy list. Uh, I mean, there's over 80 growth factors, VEGF, PDGF, IL-10. There's things that, um, you know, really get into the weeds, but suffice it to say that they are working very hard once they get put into your body. Now, there are a lot of stem cells in these materials as long as it's not radiated. The FDA doesn't mandate radiation, okay? 
So be very careful that where you're going to have your regenerative procedure, make sure that they don't radiate the, the uh, tissue. Most labs do. All right. So one of the things that's notable about the umbilical cord tissue and things around it is the Wharton's jelly. Wharton's jelly is a huge source of what's called mesenchymal stem cells. Those are very active. And the ones that are truly, truly active are called colony forming units out of those mesenchymal stem cells. So you know you're getting a tremendous source of regenerative material. Okay, we've been using this for years, very successful results, minimal, minimal, minimal risk factors. We've only had maybe two superficial infections that resolved with antibiotics with no problem. All right, thank you very much for watching. Visit us online at r3stemcell.com. Call us at 844-GET-STEM. All of our centers around the country offer a complimentary consultation. Thank you.